Budget day is often a fairly partisan day at Queen's Park, but not today. In fact, the Green Party leader Mike Schreiner said, let's quarantine partisanship. To get the opposition's reaction to today's economic statement, let us welcome Sandy Shaw. She is the NDP finance critic and the MPP for Hamilton West, Ancaster, Dundas. And via FaceTime, Hello. Mitzi Hunter, critic and the MPP for Scarborough, Guildwood. And the aforementioned Mike Schreiner, leader of the Green Party of Ontario and the MPP for Guelph. He's coming in via Skype. And we are delighted to welcome all of you uh, to my attic or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> good of all of you to be on the program tonight. Uh, even though, uh, as the old Bell commercial said, we can't really reach out and touch anyone right now. Let's get the headlines <laughs> off the top here. Uh, in order of precedence, go ahead. Sandy Shaw, your headline from today's economic statement. Well, my headline would be that people were expecting relief from our government, and they did not get that today. It wasn't delivered at all. You know, people are struggling, as we hear, just paying the bills. There's something like 44% of people in Canada have been laid off. They're wondering how they're going to, you know, make ends meet April 1st. Uh, rent's due. Mortgages are due. They're looking for immediate relief. This is a crisis. It's hard to know what the government doesn't understand about immediate relief and about a crisis. You know, they, they may have had many proposals in here, health care, important contribution. But as far as the people of Ontario, the relief that they were expecting is not being delivered in this budget today. We'll dive a little deeper into that answer in a few moments just to find out what more you may have had in mind. Mitzi Hunter, your view. Well, Steve, there's no playbook for this. Uh, this is unprecedented times, uh, the troubling uh, times for many people in Ontario. And today they were looking for the government to provide um, some, to, to have their backs, to make sure that we have a healthcare system that can stand up to the wave that is coming with COVID-19. And frankly, healthcare workers and those on the front line, those care workers in long-term care, home care, they need to make sure that they're not fundraising for masks, that, that they have the resources that they need. So the government said it's a, it's a first step. It's a small first step and it's uncertain times and we don't know when it's gonna end. We have to make sure that we weather this storm together. Mike Schreiner. Well, Steve, when I said we need to quarantine partisanship, uh, part of that was just the unprecedented nature of this mini budget passing all three readings within a few minutes in the House today, uh, because I think everybody here wants to get support out to people. Uh, but I think the government could have done more, should have done more, and I don't think they would have received criticism from the opposition for running a higher budget deficit. We need more money for frontline health care workers. We payments for people and we need more support for local businesses and uh, let's hope that the government heard that message today and we'll do more moving forward. Well let's follow up on that. Uh, Sandy Shaw, the, the government has unveiled a plan that would spend 17 billion dollars. It would put the province's books into a 20 billion dollar deficit situation. Uh, that's not unprecedented but it's almost unprecedented. What don't you see coming from the economic statement today that you wish you had? What I don't see is immediate support for individuals in this province. So if you are someone that's looking for, has lost a job or is laid off, there's nothing in this, uh, this, this statement or this budget that's going to uh, give you uh, relief. There's, there's so much that's missing from this. I mean, people um, are, are looking not, not just for the health care investment, which are critically important, and I'd like to be perfectly clear, you know, we voted in support of this bill, but we are also want to be perfectly clear that it leaves, it comes up so short in the kinds of things that individuals that are laying awake at night wondering if they can put groceries on the table, you know, if they, if they can uh, retain their employment, there's nothing in it for them. And, you know, as far as small business employers go in the province of Ontario, there's nothing in here. There's no stimulus for them. There's really nothing that's going to ensure that small business, uh, small businesses across Ontario, that we all know are the engine of the Ontario economy. There's no, there's no stimulus in here. There's really nothing that's going to ensure cash flow that's going to allow them to keep people at work. Mitzi Hunter, you're a former Associate Minister of Finance, so it, it might have been you who had to make this announcement today, had the Liberals been in power. What's the one thing in this economic statement that isn't there that you think should have been? 
we need swifter action, Steve. So you look at the $75 million that's put forward for personal protective equipment. We already know there's a shortage of that equipment. Our nursing, the, uh, the Canadian Nursing Association and uh, others are saying, hospitals are, are saying, we need this equipment. So double the amount that you're spending. I know there's a billion dollars in COVID response uh, contingency that's in place, but bring that forward and give the healthcare system the resources that are needed now so that we can deal with the healthcare crisis that is before us. Mike Schreiner, you're a former small businessman, so let me ask you this question. Um, the finance minister would say there's a lot in here for small business. He'd say we're forgiving uh, WSIB premiums to businesses. We're foregoing employer health tax premiums uh, to 90% of businesses in the province of Ontario right now. We're saying that you, whatever taxes are, are obliged to be paid, provincial taxes, uh, we're giving you a six-month holiday on paying that. Uh, I mean, those sound like pretty solid first steps or what? Well, Steve, I mean, one thing you have to look at is of the $17 billion package, $10 billion of it is corporate tax deferrals. I would have rather seen that, especially when we think of small businesses, providing a wage subsidy uh, for small businesses. The federal government's announced a 10% wage subsidy. Some countries like Denmark are offering a 75% wage subsidy. I think the province could at least help double what the federal government has offered because we want to make sure that when we get through this pandemic that uh, workers have a job to go back to, that small business owners have a job available for, for their workers. So while I've long supported an increase in the employer health tax exemption to improve cash flow for small businesses, I was happy to see that in here. I think the government could have done more, particularly through providing uh, an increased wage subsidy for businesses. Well, let me, let me can... follow up on that with Sandy Shaw. You're, as the finance critic, I, I assume you have had a conversation with the Minister of Finance at some point over the last few days as this um, you know, economic statement was in the throes of being put together. You put to him, no doubt, the idea of a $2,000 check for every Ontarian who was experiencing unemployment or underemployment. What reaction did you get? Well, to be perfectly clear, we, we sent our uh, recommendations in. We heard on a Friday that they were looking for our suggestions, and we had to have them in by the end of the weekend, and we did that. But as far as a conversation with the minister goes, that, that didn't happen. So the idea of collaboration, uh, you know, and quarantining partisanship, I love the idea. But really, this is a government that has shown that they don't listen to uh, the opposition. And really, to be perfectly honest with you, it hasn't changed now. There were so many things that we put forward uh, that we could have had a robust dialogue and collaborative discussion about because, you know, uh, this this is about all of us as uh, leaders in our community. We all have constituents that we are responsible for. We are all getting uh, just really calls that are, are uh, heartbreaking to hear. And it would be, have been welcomed uh, on my part in the part of uh, the, the, our op the opposition to have actually had uh, more dialogue so that we could discuss why we put forward an, uh, the emergency income program why we felt that was important. You know, we could have discussed why we think that they needed to be more clear about stabilizing uh, public health units across the province, and uh, that, that didn't happen. Now, having said that, Mitzi Hunter, they did increase the guaranteed annual income supplement for seniors. They doubled it uh, over the next six-month period of time. I'm sure you've got lots of seniors in your riding who'll be happy to hear that, no? Of course, um, you know, any small amount of income, whether it's the $85 uh, for seniors uh, who are the lowest income seniors, that helps. That gives them a little bit of um, change really in their pocket for families who have uh, children requiring childcare. There's $200 to $250. That helps. But, you know, we've called on doubling the wage subsidy that the federal government has put in place, the province of Ontario needs to do its part to support workers. We don't know how long the pandemic for COVID-19 is going to take to, first of all, keep people safe from and protected from this virus by flattening the curve, making sure our healthcare system does not become overwhelmed by the virus. So making sure we have enough ventilators, we have enough um, beds available, as well as personal protective equipment, and we keep our healthcare workers safe that's the immediate response we need for the crisis. Our economy in Ontario is robust. We have a strong economy. It's very diverse. But at the same time, we need to make sure that once this crisis is, we're through this crisis, that we stabilize our economy and we can get back to growth. Yeah, Mike Schreiner, let me ask you about that, following up on what Mitzi Hunter just said. 
there were numbers in the economic statement today that you know one wonders how accurate they're going to be a month from now, a week from now. I don't know. For example, the projections of economic growth next year being zero percent. I mean, I'm hearing that. I'm hearing the economy could contract 5%, 10%, 15%. So to have that kind of a number in the economic statement today, how useful do you think it was? Well, I mean, any economic prediction right now, like we're, we have a playbook that none of us have ever dealt with. So it's going to be difficult to have accurate numbers. I mean, that economists have been saying is get money in people's pockets as soon as possible. And I'm deeply concerned that Canada in general and Ontario in particular is not doing that. Uh, so, for instance, it's great the federal government has stepped up with employment insurance, but there's a delay, uh, a significant delay for people who have bills to pay right now. That's why we've been calling for a basic income security payment that would at least bring people to the low income security cutoff, which would be $1,800 for an individual, $2,400 for a family or a household. Uh, British Columbia is offering $1,000 uh, a month. Uh, to its residents. Quebec has stepped up 537 a week because economists are saying we've got to get money in people's pockets now, not only to help them pay the bills, keep the lights on, meet their rental payments, but also to make sure we have enough cash flowing through our economy to help cushion the blow, which we all know we're going to be hit with the blow. But if we can cushion it as much as possible, we know people, especially those with lower incomes, they spend their money and get it back out into the economy, and that is critically important right now. So let me follow up with Sandy on that. You, you heard, of course, the federal government make its announcement this morning about the new CERB, the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. That is $2,000, uh, very much, I guess, similar to the program that the Ontario NDP were advancing. Uh, they've decided to do it. So can you just sort of take a bow and say mission accomplished, not at Queen's Park, but federally anyway? No, not at all. I think the thing with the federal um, help is that it's too slow to get out. I mean, we're, we're, they're talking about perhaps uh, unrolling this in two, three, four weeks. It's not clear how quickly they're going to get this money into people's hands. You know, and, and, and as Mike has said, the most important thing right now is that people have income, that people have money to be able to spend not only just for the economy, but to be able to spend to keep their families safe. I mean, people are worried. There are people, there's, there's a reason why people, you know, are, are want to stock up on groceries because they're not sure what the future holds. And they needed from this government some kind of reassurance that they truly, truly uh, had the backs of the people of Ontario, not just words, but with action. And I find the irony uh, so, so deep that this is a government that spends so much time saying, we're going to put more money back into the, into the pockets of the people of Ontario. And now is their chance to do it, and they ha have failed to do that. Mitzi Hunter, let me ask you about an idea that's now percolating through the Oval Office and the White House, uh, the notion that Donald Trump is more concerned about the effects, the, the, the disastrous economic impacts of essentially shutting down the economy for a, a protracted period of time, and his view that that, that cure could be more harmful to the economy than the actual disease in the first place that we're fighting. What's your take on that? We can't devalue any life. And right now we are in a health crisis. This virus is touching everyone. Prince Charles today is just diagnosed with COVID-19. And so we have to protect and respond to those who are the most vulnerable. I got to say, Steve, I received a report from a long-term care center in my riding. And last week there was one person that was diagnosed. Today, two individuals passed away. And, you know, it is just heart wrenching when you lose a family member because of this virus, because of this disease. There's no amount of money that can replace that individual life. Right now, governments must work in a coordinated effort as efficiently and as responsibly and reactively as well. So we know we need ventilators. Let's get those companies producing those products that are most needed right now. It's a global pandemic and we have to do what we can to fight this virus. The economy will reset when we get beyond this storm. Mike Schreiner, let me give you the last word on this. Any concerns that the cure may be worse than the actual disease? You know, Steve, the economy is here to serve people. People are not here to serve the economy. We have to save lives first and foremost, bottom line. I'm appalled at the thinking down south. Uh, the bottom line is, is 
We need an economy that's going to serve people, and that ultimately is going to be what's best for the economy in the long run. Okay, you were so economical in the way you answered that question. I still got 30 seconds left to give to Sandy oh, Shaw in case, <laughs> in case she wants to respond to that question as well. Thanks, Mike. I owe you 30 seconds in the legislature. <laughs> Absolutely. I, you know, <laughs> I really, I couldn't, I, I couldn't endorse what Mike has said more, that this, we're talking about the economy, but foremost, we're talking about a humanitarian crisis. And that's how we have to respond. There is no playbook. But this, the, how we behave now and how we act as a government will define our generation. We've seen people step up in Hamilton. They say this is the fire that forges the steel. We're doing our part for, as people uh, to support one another, our neighbors, our friends, and we expect our government to do the same. As a Hamiltonian, I kind of like that analogy. That's Sandy Shaw, <laughs> the New Democrat finance critic, along with Mitzi Hunter, the liberal finance critic, and Mike Schreiner who is the leader of the Green Party of Ontario. Really good of all of you to join us on TVO tonight. And as they say, wash your hands and stay safe, everybody. Thanks, Be well. Steve, you too. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario, and by viewers like you. Thank you.